Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make some floating shelves, and that's essentially what they're going to look like. I've got to make three of these guys, and I don't have my shop set up right now to do this, but I'm going to I'm going to make do. Uh, I need to do these things. All my um, a lot of my stuff is at the job site, so my miter saw is one of the things I'm going to be missing here. But I have my crosscut sled, so. I think I'm going to be using that. Okay, um, I need to make rips. So I'm going to make uh, the top and bottom are going to be uh, half inch ultralight MDF. So that's going to save weight. This is paint grade. The uh, front is going to be, uh, that can be half inch ultralight also. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, the, the only thing that matters is the uh, the way this is built in order to not sag over time. So this is 60 inches or a little over. So it's a pretty big uh, span, but it's got um, a back cleat on the wall and the side cleat. So it should hold pretty good. Typically they do when they're designed like this and it's gonna be uh, glued and everything. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and set my rip fence at um, 17 and a quarter. I've got a, 40-tooth um, forest woodworker thin kerf blade in there. Okay, I've got the bottom laid out and I'm going to put the top on it after I put these on. So what I need to do, if I flush these up at the end, down here, this distance right here is two and a quarter inches. So what I want to do is I want to split the difference and put that at one and one eighth. I'm just going to set this up at one and one eighth inches. So that's going to give me what I need as far as the setback goes. And I can do that on either end, on both sides. Okay, now as far as the layout goes, remember this is going to be going up against the wall. And there's going to be a cleat on the wall. It's three quarters of an inch, so it's going to be going into a cavity like that. Now, I don't want that, I don't want this piece to be blocking that cleat. So I'm just going to bring this back. It's really not critical how far I bring it back, but 
since we already have it set to one and an eighth on this, I might as well just use that. That line. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach it with some glue and brass. This is only half inch material there. So I'm gonna go one and three quarter brads, I mean two inch brads, and I'm gonna make sure it doesn't sink it too deep. So that's gonna be that one. This middle one, it really doesn't matter where I put that. It's not really critical. Since I'm gonna have this guy here, I'm gonna go ahead and set this up somewhere in the middle. So now I can draw a line all the way down. The beauty of this is when I go to nail it on, I'll know exactly where that goes. Okay, this one here, I wanna put an X on the front because that's the side that the piece is gonna go on. So that's gonna go there. And then this is gonna be almost flush with the front, basically flush, but not quite. Okay, now to start, I'm just gonna take this guy and the side that the X is on, that's the side I'm gonna put glue on. Whole thing. So we wanna make sure we get plenty of glue. And this, isn't, this doesn't have to be exact. This is just a layout. All right, we'll start a little ways away from the end so we don't split it. All right, so that barely sunk it. I'm gonna go to three. See how that does. That's good. The nice thing about doing it like this is that it takes the guesswork out of, you know, the layout since you kind of have an idea. It's just real easy. So we want this to be a little inside, a little bit inside the uh, edge. Just a little bit because what we're going to do is we're actually going to rip this guy and we're going to flush it all up. But I don't want to take too much off so okay so when I put this one on the only thing I need to think about There's, there's two things I need to think about. One is the, um, the location of the front and the sides to get it somewhat even. Now, probably the best way to do it is just to put a square up here and push it up. The cabinet squares that I have and just take it right there, put it right there. So I know those guys are flush. So this is essentially where it needs to be. We just need to put some glue on it and make a note of where we're gonna nail these guys on. Since we have this guy, we know that's gonna represent the front right there. But we wanna be in front of that. So we're gonna be right here. Make sure we get lots of glue on this guy. And this is what's gonna give the strength in this guy. So these are obviously pretty big floating shells. That seems good right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and nail on this front.
just to keep it from moving. Back is, so we want to be inside that. That's where the line is. And we want to go to this side of it. Next thing is to take this assembly and add the front to it. You can see how this is proud. So when we put the uh, front on, we have two options here. One is we can flush this out and make sure that it's perfect, or we can take the front and apply it so it just touches those parts, and that's going to be the constant contact point, and that will be really nice. So we can do that. Um, if we rip it and get it all flush, that's just going to give us a perfectly parallel and 90 degree and there's only nails on one side of this. So if you're thinking about nails, obviously the finishers are going to cover those up. But the, the bottom side does not have nails. So on floating shelves, I usually put the nails up since they're usually high up. And if they're visible, I would flip the piece over and use the bottom as the top since it doesn't have nails. Um, but either way, the nails are only on one side, so it kind of gives you some flexibility, especially if it's a stain grade job. And the front can be glued on with clamps only. Uh, no nails on that if you're concerned about nails. But you see that glue squeeze out? I don't want that, so I'm going to wipe that up, get rid of it. And then I have them laying on my platform so it's flat, perfectly flat. And so when they dry, they should be perfectly flat. Okay, here they are. They've dried overnight, and as you can see, they're extremely rigid. Oh, fairly heavy, not terribly heavy, but lifting up like that, it's kind of heavy. All right, so you can see down there, hollow cavity, and just dead straight, dead flat, I mean, so that's awesome. Now. What I want to do is since the, um, this lip right here protrudes a little bit, and you can see how that, that lip is fairly even. It's pretty consistent going down. I'm going to go ahead and um, just square this edge up because I want to make sure that it's perfectly straight and square. So I'm gonna actually going to um, pass this over the jointer and the reason I'm going to do the jointer is because if I do the table saw I'm going to get tear out on the bottom and I don't want tear out so I want that edge to be nice and clean and even with the best blade there could be some possibility of a little chip out on the bottom and I don't want that so I'm going to run it across the jointer and I should end up with two very crisp and clean edges and it will be uh, straight, and, you know, everything will be good. The, and it will also be a little bit cleaner too because the uh, process of shaving off this is probably going to be a little messier on the table saw. So I'm going to run this across the jointer. And then this whole distance right here, the thickness, is uh, two and three quarter inches. So I'm going to make a front that goes on here a little over two and three quarter inches. So I have a little bit of room to sand off when I'm done. Okay, so wish me luck. I'm going to go over to the joiner and join these guys.
So all my tools have blast gates on them, and in, unless it's the table saw, that's always open. Um, I don't close the blast gate on that guy. But this one has a blast gate, and I just open it when I need it and shut it when I don't, because it goes also to the miter saw and the router tables and all that stuff. So um, it's unnecessary to have it open all the time. I'm going to go ahead and open it for this. So now we can see what we're left with and we're left with a very clean edge. You can see nice and clean and that's going to take the glue real well. So basically it's just a slab at this point and that's it. Just smooth and straight and square. So now when we put that your piece on it. Um, we'll glue it up, clamp it up, let it set, and then once it's dry we can uh, sand it flush and everything. I'm going to make some pieces here. So these are two and three quarter uh, by 61 and a quarter. Before I rip these, since I have my crosscut sled here, I'm just going to go ahead and cut them uh, to length. Now in order to glue them up, I'm going to put this on a, uh, a few business cards. That's going to raise it up just a touch. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow this piece to drop down below the bottom and give me that little lip. And then I will have a little lip on this side too. Uh, this piece is made just a little bit thicker than what I need. this guy and drop it down. You see that gap right there? That, that That's what I'm talking about as far as the, it's just going to be a subtle lip. So I take this piece here and I want to make sure that I, the side that was up on the top as I ripped this, I want that to be like that, right? Because there's going to be a little tear out on this bottom edge. So I don't want that to be on the joint if you, if that makes sense. If I put that bottom edge for the glue joint. Some people would think, oh, well, you want the part that's good to be on the front because it's got the crisp edge. <clears throat> well, when you put it up here, if there's any tear out, which normally there is, you're going to see that in the joint. And trust me, it shows up. So put the side that is the clean side up where the joint is. And now, when you sand this and everything, you're going to get rid of that little chip out that's on that front edge, and you're going to end up with a very, very tough to see joint, especially considering this is half inch and not three quarter. Um, the thinner these fronts are, the better, because they hide more. Now, as far as the clamping goes, in this particular operation, I'm going to put clamps on the top, and then I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to put clamps on the bottom because I want this lip. Um, I don't want to deal with that with the clamps, so it's going to be a lot easier to do it this way. And then flip it over and put a couple more on the bottom. This is going to take a few clamps because this is not going to have a lot of strength as you push this down. Um, there's not a lot of strength in this, so it needs to have quite a bit of clamps. To, uh, now, you don't have to worry about this middle part. That's not a, a critical thing. It's just the top and bottom edges. That's all you really care about as far as the um, glue. And what I'll do is I'll just put one in the middle. It doesn't have to have like total coverage. And then 
get this guy. The goal is to have glue squeeze out. No matter how you look at it, you want glue squeeze out. So I'm going to smear this so it hits that top edge, and that's what creates the mess, basically. We've got, we're purposely trying to get, you know, glue squeeze out. And I'm going to start on one end and just work my way down. It doesn't take much pressure. So as you can see, I'm angling these guys so they kind of cover top and bottom, but like I said, most likely we're going to have to add clamps on the bottom. All right. So if you see a spot that doesn't have glue squeeze out and you want it to, just take some glue and just kind of work it in the joint. If there is any kind of open area, the paint will find it and you'll get a void. Oh, baby. Okay, so now you can see. Now, because I've jointed this, this is a nice, flat, perfectly flat surface it's going on. Yeah, that doesn't need any additional clamps. Nothing. I'm getting good glue squeeze out. It's good. So I'm going to go ahead and set that aside to dry. And to dry pretty fast. Oh, baby. Oh, oh my God. That is crazy heavy. you can see here you see how it's just hitting that bottom area well that's going to give me pressure all the way down to the bottom and that's why I'm getting good squeeze out right there so you got that yeah that's nice okay so I'm gonna go ahead and leave those guys right there and it is almost nine o'clock so these guys really don't need to be in much longer than, we'll say, an hour. And take them out of the clamp. It's been about an hour. Um, so I'm almost ready to take it off. And you can see the glue has definitely hardened up. Um, you can definitely see that. This is the last one I did. So as you go around. Now the flush trimming bit's going to be what I'm going to use for this. Um, you can use a lot of things. You may not even need a flush trim bit. Uh, this half inch ultra white will sand really pretty easily. But um, if you don't trust yourself using a flush trim bit, then don't. Um, but it should be pretty reasonable to do this with the flush trim bit and get really good results. Okay. So when you put this on the wall, the cleat on the side is going to go here. So basically this whole thing is going to slide into the opening um, and it's going to slide into the cleats. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and release all the clamps on these. It's been sitting now for uh, two hours. So this is dry enough. I'm going to go ahead and release them and I'm just going to go ahead and sand them off. I'm not going to flush trim them. I'm just going to sand it. It might take just a little bit more time, but ultimately I have to sand it anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and sand it with 100 grit fresh paper, and I'm gonna use my five inch sander. Right next to where you're gonna need them. All right, so normally this sander, I wouldn't be using for this. I would use my six inch. However, I don't have my six inch here. So I'm gonna use some fresh, 
Reuben 2. That's what I use. 100 grit. I have another 6 inch sander, but it only has a 3 millimeter stroke. So, we'll see. <laughs> So that's done. Okay, all I have to do is cut it to length. So let's look at it really close up. It's really good. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So now you can kind of get an idea of how it's going to go, right? I'm going to use my track saw. So that's going to be interesting. But here's the thing, I'm, because I'm going to do three up because I have a 70 inch fence. Oh. I'm trying to yield the best cut on the uh, face, even though these things might be getting trimmed. All right. So I got these things somewhat flushed out even on all the sides. So I'm going to be taking off about a quarter of an inch off this guy. And I'm going to go ahead and just measure that out. And put it on this one here. That's going to be about a quarter of an inch. Go down on this one. dust collection because this is open cavity here and basically you're just it's like you're trimming off the whole thing but just barely got through it I mean just barely all right now I got one end squared up we'll take this and we'll flip these guys around and we'll do the other use it Now we can measure total length 60 and 3 quarters. A little operation, I built the entire job and had less dust. We'll keep that air cleaner on for just a little bit. So these guys, hopefully, are going to be good. Um, you know, they tend to need something when you go to the job site. 
nothing works like you know you think it would. It's not like putting it into a cabinet. Here, very clean top edge, certainly. Bottom edge is pretty clean too, but not as clean as the top edge. Even though it just barely cut it, it was enough to make a nice clean edge since this was on the bottom side. And uh, yeah, that looks great. Nice and flushed out. Yeah, it's really good. That's it, it's ready.